can set. And then what I'm going to do. And my fellow geeks and geekettes, welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris. And today it is a life size Freddy Krueger statue update. Now, in today's video, it's all about chopping and changing this mannequin that you see right here. So I managed to get this mannequin for a hundred bucks, a full mannequin for a hundred bucks at a place here in Sydney called Reverse Garbage. Now, if you are based in Sydney, I highly recommend checking out Reverse Garbage. It's located in Marrickville. If you're a prop builder, artist in general, you will love Reverse Garbage. It is random crap bowler at its finest and they have a lot of mannequins dirt cheap. So I've gone ahead and marked out where I need to cut. And I'm also going to show you guys the lower section of the legs where we're going to remove a lot of the height because combined with the original sculpt here that's going to be fused to the torso of the mannequin, this baby measures at a whopping 191 centimeters. Now there are a few conflicting figures as to what Robert's actual height is. His IMDB lists him as 179 centimeters. Uh, celebrity height lists him between my height, 175. 176 so I tried to even it out to like an average height so anyway I took the total height of this plus the head sculpts and subtracted the average height of Robert Anglin so we have to remove about 5.5 inches from the leg. So I consulted my good friend Greg Morayo who specializes in mannequins and high-end displays and full-size one-to-one scale displays and asked him should I halve it, split the difference and take 2.25 inches off the thigh and 2.25 inches off the calf and he goes look Freddy's got baggy pants, you're not going to notice it. Just take the full five and a half inches off the thigh itself. Now as you can see here, I've marked out where I need to gut the neck. Now I'm going to be using a paint stripper gun to make all this part of the resin soft and malleable so we can fuse it nicely and have it resting flush on the torso itself. We're also going to be making the arms poseable. So I'm going to be gutting out the arms. Now when I do first initially cut the arms, I'm going to be filling the shoulders with our foam 33. This is a rigid uh, expanding foam. It's gonna act as a bit of insurance because when it comes time to putting everything together, if I find the shoulders are too broad, we can shave it down and we've got foam in there to hold the shape. So you gotta keep in mind, Robert Anglin is pretty naturally broad-shouldered, especially when he played Freddy in the first Elm Street. He's a surfer, so he has that broad Dorito shape to him. Even though he's only 175 centimeters, he still had a bit of broadness to him when he had the Freddy gear on. But again, if I find that he's too broad, I can just shave the shoulders down and still have foam in there so we can sculpt a nice shape. Now you'll notice here, I've gone ahead and marked out a V cut here. Now this is something that's going to be completely optional and if it doesn't work out, it's reversible. So I'm hoping to do a bit of an ab crunch. What I'm going for is a lot of realism in terms of the pose. I don't want a static mannequin pose. I want something that's natural and Robert had this kind of swagger to him. He's always had a swagger to him as Freddy, but especially in the first one, he was like hunched and kind of just cool to say the least. And the idea is to remove this section, we're gonna heat the back of the mannequin with the same paint stripper gun that we're gonna be using on the neck here and move him forward so he's got a bit of a hunch. If it doesn't work out, we can pop it back and then pop this piece back in place. So again, it's totally reversible, but I want it as an option. Glorious, isn't it? Oh, I <laughs> didn't see you there. So as you can see right here, these are the markings that I've got. So this is 5.5 inches on either side. Now we're gonna be using an angle grinder to make all the cuts and also a different attachment on the angle grinder to shave and shape certain contours. Now, when we've made the cuts on this, I'm gonna be inserting some foam on either ends, just so it's gonna make contact adhering the pieces together a lot more easier. Down the track, I may fiberglass the pieces together, but for the most part, we can just use a bit of duct tape. I know that sounds really cheap and nasty, but also if we have to do some repairs and have to go back in, it's easier to take apart. So first up, we're gonna take this beast apart and cut him up. So with that being said, let's get to it. OK, 
Okay, now before we go any further, I'm just gonna mix up that batch of R Foam 33 and put it at the top of the shoulders of the mannequin pieces. So, mix ratio, as always, well, usually is 100 to 100. Okay, 70 for one, so we're gonna go 140 combined total. Now you wanna mix this stuff quick because it is a very quick chemical reaction. Again, this is just a bit of insurance in case I need to shave the shoulders down if he's a little too broad. Keeping in mind, Robert is very broad shouldered, but we can't have him looking too broad, especially if he's gonna be hunched over if we do go with that option. Okay, in we go. And the other one. Cool. <laughs> it is time for some shitty commentary. So what I loved most about cutting this mannequin is it wasn't made of fiberglass. There was no fiberglass dust going everywhere. It was made of some sort of a, a, like a hot melt plastic, almost like a vinyl, but a really strong vinyl. So the worst thing was like little fragments, like melty bits running everywhere and jumping everywhere from when I was using the angle grinder. But apart from that, it, it was pretty smooth sailing in terms of cutting. And I just wanted to make the cuts as smooth and as straight as possible, especially when it came to the legs as you see right there, because the slightest mishap, slip, whatever, if there's a bit of a difference with the height on either leg, it just throws the entire aesthetic off of the entire display, especially when we're removing so much. So I'm just getting my orbital sander and just cleaning everything up. As you can see, there's a bit of a dip there on that right leg on the thigh that I just had to clean up a little bit. So what we're gonna be doing is jabbing the limbs into the foam so we have a perfect template. It's like when you have a cookie cutter. It's essentially what we're doing. It's like we're baking really cool looking cookies and there's my van. <laughs> so it was pretty straightforward, smoosh it in, cut it out and then pop it into the limbs and this is um, something that I was really happy with in terms of it turning out so well, but it was so straightforward and it just helps with gluing these pieces back together. So once they're in place, I actually got some builder's bog and bogged them in place just so they wouldn't be slipping anywhere and just so they were secure. But to join the actual pieces, we're using Araldite. Now Araldite is like what I call the grown-ups glue. It's like what my dad used back in the day and this thing will bloody stick a 747 to another 747 and it's an epoxy resin so you know mix it together the stuff stinks but you got to apply it to both pieces both surfaces that you're joining together because it is a contact adhesive and this was the five minute one so I, I tried to work as quick as possible especially putting both legs on and I'm trying to look upside down at the legs to make sure that they looked natural and it worked out pretty well. And then whilst they were drying, I grabbed the heat gun and started to do the little ab crunch on the torso. And I really was happy how it turned out. And you'll see that in the final display. It's a tiny little change, but it just makes the pose so much more menacing and Freddy-like. And vice versa with the head sculpt, softening it and just mounting it onto the torso. And I was really happy. I wanted a bit of a head turn and I got it, as you can see right there. All right, here's where we're at right now, Geeks and Geekheads. I'm really happy with how this form is looking. However, we do have to make a few adjustments, especially when it comes to the shoulders. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the width of the shoulders. Again, you gotta keep in mind, even though Robert Anglin's about my height, he's still really broad shouldered because he's a surfer and that's just his genetics. But what I'm thinking is we're gonna have to shave off and taper down here on the shoulders because there are parts of the casting, the pre-existing casting here that are bumping up and I've given it a test with the sweater on and it just doesn't look natural. So we're just gonna be shaving off this area here. Now, I do like the contour of this shoulder here, but I am gonna go in and just shave a little bit off this shoulder here. Now remember, we reinforce it with some expander foam so there will be a form under there. So when we do attack it with the angle grinder, there's still gonna be mass there that we can shape the shoulder with. Now when it comes to the arms for the part one display, you're looking at it. I'm gonna be keeping these arms static like that. This is the pose I'm going for when it comes to the part one look. I do love it when Robert just has his arms down, he's kind of relaxed and the gloves down by his side. When it comes to the part six, however, I'm gonna be purchasing another mannequin, so we're gonna be able to swap out the torso and the arms, and then have the arms, or in this case, the right arm, in the up position when the glove is on for the part six look, or if I wanna swap it out for the part one look and have the glove up like so. When you do make the arms flexible on a mannequin, 
you lose the realism of how a hand naturally looks if you've got it up in this position. And I feel if you have the locked down position and the locked up position permanently, it looks a lot better. So that's the plan. I will be buying another mannequin. So essentially when it comes to either the part one or part six look, you can have different looks going on. And essentially it's just like a giant hot toy. It's gonna have different accessories, different interchangeable pieces. And I think that is gonna work the best overall. So to finish off today, we're gonna do some shaving here. And we're gonna get rid of some bumps here and also shave down this part of the shoulder. We're then going to weather the pants and assemble the whole piece together and throw the costume on. Now these are the placeholder hands for the time being. These are the hands that came with the mannequin. When it comes to the hand that's going to house the glove, I'm going to be purchasing a flexible silicon hand off Etsy. It's very affordable, very realistic, and it just needs a bit of dirtying up, a bit of weathering, and a bit of schmutz. When it comes to the left hand, I do have this hand on the way from eBay. It's a gray PVC hand. I'm going to try my best to color it with a flesh tone weather it if not if it doesn't work out if it doesn't look natural worst case scenario I'm gonna mold my dad's hand my dad's left hand my dad's got very burly man hands and I just figure for something like Freddy that suit really well so the left hand will just be a display hand whereas the right hand will be poseable so when the gloves on it you can do whatever pose you want all right with that being said we're gonna shave down the shoulders and the traps and then we're gonna put this guy together so that being said let's get to it Alrighty, here are the pants. Now, the going rumor is, is that Robert wore Dickie's brand work pants back in the first Elm Street and a couple of the other Elm Street films. Now, to find vintage Dickie's work pants is next to impossible, and if you do, they cost an absolute arm and a leg. But I found these pants in my local Westfield. They were 40 bucks. The brand is Farrah? F-A-R-A-H. Now in terms of weathering these, I've developed a highly technical method that has never been seen before on this channel. Aren't you just so handsome? And there we have it guys. This is where we're at so far and I'm beyond thrilled with the overall look of this part one Fred. This is the pose I wanted. Just that nice, neutral, relaxed, but with the glove splayed out down by his right side. So in terms of the part six Fred display, when it's time to do that, it's gonna be the glove up position with the snarl. I opted for the snarl as opposed to the evil grin. With that being said, the FedEx parcel with the original 3D print from Fact Fox is on its way for delivery today. So I'm gonna have an unboxing video for that and I'm very excited. Now, all that's left to do obviously is the left and the right hand. Now you guys probably noticed I had a different hand, a poseable hand on the right hand. I actually made that years ago for my Nightmare Batman display and the reason why I put it on here is because it has the position and the splayness of what it looks like when Fred has his glove on. So just for a bit of effect. So of course the left hand, I've ordered that hand off eBay. It's like a mannequin hand, a PVC mannequin hand. If I'm able to get it to look right, it's gonna be a winner. If not, I'll just take a mold of my dad's hand with some good old alginate and plaster. In terms of the right hand, it's gonna be a silicon poseable hand that you can get off Etsy for about a hundred bucks. So that's pretty good in my books. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I hope you dug this little update. This was a lot of fun to do and I can't wait to move on to the part six display and then have both of them ready to go. So with that being said, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly, and until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. <laughs> <laughs>